Good morning. We're in the shop today. This morning it's uh, Saturday, 7.30 a.m. Get an early start on some manufacturing. And uh, today I'd like to bring you with me as we make some Thunder Mugs. These are devices that I sell online. And this is kind of what kicked off this whole shop. Um, you'll often hear me call them cannons, although I'm starting to transition out of calling them cannons because I am afraid somebody will stick a golf ball in these things and blow themselves up or do something stupid. So now I just call them Thunder Mugs. I'll show you the product and how it's made. Uh, let's get to it. Okay, so the first step in all of this actually isn't even cutting anything. It's getting the material here to the shop. Um, on Friday yesterday, my dad helped me to bring these four bars over to my shop. He has to drive up to North Salt Lake and uh, I, I bought these. They're, they're getting quite expensive, this material. It was upwards of like 750 bucks for these four bars. Um, it used to be that I can buy material for about $10 per Thunder Mug, and now it costs me 28. So in the last four years, uh, between inflation and taxation and, and the cost of goods and materials, and the steel industry has just exploded. And we're talking now, we're, we're up almost 300% on the price of, of steel bars. It used to be also that I could buy a Korean made steel um, which was significantly cheaper, but because of a lot of things that are happening in the U.S. now, everything's to be, uh, everything seems to be more American-made, which is a good thing, right? But it does mean it becomes more expensive. So anytime I buy this steel, this is three-inch diameter um, bar, and it, it, it comes with these, if you buy it from a, a reputable place, it comes with these certificate of test reports, and, and it shows you here, that it's U.S. made steel, um, but this can be tricky sometimes. Saying that the country of origin is USA doesn't always necessarily mean it's 100% U.S., meaning that they're, the mill that this came from could have been purchased, uh, the materials purchased from overseas, and then rolled or formed here in the U.S., but actually down here in the corner, it's even, it's even more specific. It's been melted and manufactured in the U.S., so this is Good quality, 100% American-made steel right here. Um, and that's this is one of the reasons why this steel is becoming so expensive is because of the quality of steel. Um, and if you're going to ask me my honest opinion, um, I can't tell any difference between this and the Korean stuff that I used to buy. But, uh, hey, you know, it is what it is. And uh, I, I have to be, I'm limited to what I can buy here in Salt Lake City. So uh, let's go ahead and load up this steel up and we'll get it cut and uh, we'll, we'll keep on moving. Okay, so before I get cutting, um, and I ex please excuse the noise in the background, that's the saw cutting out the next piece. Um, I'm gonna be using three tools to cut out this thunder mug. And uh, these are them right here. Um, so this is a, um, this is called a, a trigon insert right here. And it's made out of uh, tungsten carbide. In fact, all of these uh, inserts are made out of some kind of carbide material. And uh, anyways, what this does is it's a very hard type of material, much, much harder than the steel. So it'll act like a knife while cutting it. And uh, this is what I'd use to cut the outside of the part um, and you'll see that here in a second and I set this inside of what's called a quick tool uh, uh, sorry <laughs> quick tool post um, anyways you, they just kind of drop in and this lever arm locks it into place and makes it really sturdy so I'll be cutting the outside of the material with that the next thing I have is this uh, spade drill and it's got a hole in the background uh, where I can actually put my little coolant line in and it actually sends coolant through the bit and cools off the very tip of the drill because as you can imagine drilling steel it gets very hot with all that friction and so we got to keep it lubricated keep it cool and then the last tool is this boring bar and uh, you'll notice that the insert is exactly the same as the inside but where this one cuts on the outside of the part this one will go on the inside and provide us with our our corner uh, chamfering so here we go, let's have at it. 
Okay, so I've started the machine and sorry, I've had to move the camera around a little bit. But as you can see, as I'm cutting this, I've got this coolant going through and this coolant is just basically water mixed with a synthetic type of oil. And uh, it's gonna do two things. It's gonna keep the bit cool and then it's gonna kind of lubricate the part as it's cutting as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this hood. And hopefully that doesn't obstruct things too much, but if I leave this thing unclosed, it's gonna fling coolant all over my shop. That was the next cannon falling. So what I'm doing right here is after the material gets cut, sometimes it has a little bit of a rough surface, so I just take some emery cloth, what this is called, it's like sandpaper, and just go over the cannon to make it smooth and it kind of polishes it as well. Okay, so now I'm going to do the second side. All I need to do is take this cannon out, flip it around. Get and tighten right back up. I got to stop calling it cannon. I think I mentioned that I got to stop calling it cannon already and I keep, do, keep doing it. But um, you'll notice that there's a step and the reason why I have the step is actually intentional for manufacturing. Um, when I flip this around, and if I try to make this diameter on the outside the same, uh, like all the way across, I would have to machine one side, turn it around and machine the other side, and as the other side machines in, I'd have to get it absolutely perfect to make it look nice. And even though this is a CNC machine, it's precision, it's difficult to make things absolutely perfect. So. I just intentionally put a step in here so all I have to cut is just this section right here and I can cut it larger in diameter and then it looks intentional like it's designed that way. And, uh, and, and actually there is a larger base down here where the propellant is that'll create more strength so yeah in a way that is intentional 
but really I'm just giving it like an aesthetic appearance while also making my manufacturing process easier. So I'm cheating and that's what engineers do. <laughs> so let's get this thing started. Every time I hit uh, a button on this machine, it beeps. If you're ever wondering what that beeping is, Okay, I get the air coolant going. Let's go. Okay, same deal as before. Gonna hit this with some emery cloth, get it polished up, blow it off, and then we'll get the fuse hole drilled. Okay, so we're at the mill now and we're going to put the fuse hole inside of the cannon and I'm gonna be using two tools for this. And so the first tool is, oh, let's see if I get this into focus, there we go. This is called a, uh, oh, break. Every time I go to talk about a new thing, I forget the name of it. Um, some people call it a spot drill, um, but really it's called a center drill. And what this is gonna do for us, it's gonna provide a pilot into the part material and then see how it steps from a small to large and then it's got a 45 degree chamfer on that it's also going to chamfer apart all at the same time it's really important to pilot this material because we're trying to drill on a round surface so if you can imagine that if you were to come in here with a drill bit that's really long and you were to touch on this round surface it can slide to the left or right of this thing and so this pilot drill being really short and stout won't try to move at all inside of the drill bit it'll just hit the hit the material and start drilling in without sliding Let's go ahead, load up our material here, and you'll see that this process is probably the fastest of them all. Same kind of deal that I got the coolant. Notice how it wasn't spraying right on the tip. The reason why it's not spraying right on the tip is because I've got this long drill bit here that I really want to focus in on. So I don't want to keep coming over here and changing the coolant. Notice how it's perfectly on the tip there. So I don't want to keep moving stuff around, so I just leave it right where it is. Okay, so one of the things you may have noticed is that as it's drilling, it's going up and down. That's called peck drilling. It's kind of like pecking down at the part. And that has a very strategic reason. And that is, is that as the drill bit is cutting the material, it's developing chips that build up inside of the hole. And as those chips build up, the coolant can't get down inside of the hole as it's drilling in order to cool off the tip of the bit. If that tip of the bit gets too hot, it'll just break. So peck drilling allows it to come up, it clears all the chips, and then it blow, it like sprays off just a little bit of coolant on that tip to keep it cool, and it goes right back down to drilling again. So every time it's going up and down, it's only going down 0.1 inches. So just, just a little bit, and so it's just kind of pecking down until it gets to its final depth, which is at the very center of this thunder mug. So let me blow it off. Like I said, if you can remember, we use that 
that center drill and it puts a nice little chamfer on there so we're done okay so the last thing that i'm going to do is just package up this uh, thunder mug and get ready for shipping um, i've realized over time that packaging is just as important as actually making the darn thing uh, because if it gets to the customer damaged uh, then you're out the entire piece or a partial refund is what you have to give them to make them happy or, or take a bad hit on a review, which I will never do. Um, I'd much rather just give this thing to somebody for free than take a bad review. Um, I hope nobody abuses that. Uh, so I'm just gonna show you quickly how I package it up so that it's secure um, and how I get it ready. So I guess the first thing is uh, it had that coolant on there. So I just wanna get all that white coolant off and uh, I'm gonna make my box for it here real quick just to get it out of my way. I have bought these boxes, finding that they're the best way to keep things secure. Move that out. And what I do is I'll take a light coat of oil on this thing. And uh, the reason why I coat it in oil is because they are made out of carbon steel that are very susceptible to rust. So I don't want these things to rust at all before they get to my customers. And the other thing is I tell my customers to keep them oiled too. Okay, so I just put in a Ziploc bag just to help keep the rust on there. Put that in my box. And lately I've been giving uh, little goodies too. Why? I don't know. I just feel like making people happy. I don't know if it's something I should be doing or not but I think it's kind of a nice touch. I ship these in flat rate boxes, medium size, and I just really pack them with this paper, craft paper. I know this is the, the best type of packaging material for these Thunder mugs. And that's it. So now we can ship this off and hopefully make somebody happy and have a boomtastic time with this thing. So that's start to finish. And if you've got any questions, let me know because uh, I do this so much. I've done this hundreds of times already and now it's routine for me. So I probably did something that I didn't even show in the videos. Let me know if I did. All right, see ya.